You also have an option of the art kit to go, and that's where we have 130 designs in there right now for paintings. Um, so you can just get an art kit to go, and you can just uh, you can pick it up. We can ship it to you. It'll include instructions. It'll, it'll include a link to a video if that video exists. Those are the videos that we're working on during the day. Um, so yeah, that's what you get with your art kit to go. So if you have friends across the country that never get to paint with you because they live so far away, no more excuses. <laughs> No more excuses. All right, we have other art kits, of course. You'll find those in our shop section. That's where you'd find like the ceramics, the wood, the whatever. But the virtual art kit, so that's what I wanted to tell you about, the virtual art kit. So when these videos get recorded, the first place they go, and I'm talking three, four videos a day now, when these first get recorded, the first place they go is to the virtual art kits. So if you go to our website, creativelyuncorked.com shop, Sorry, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna wrap it up soon and do some demos. That's where you find the virtual art kits. Virtual means there's no download. Or I'm sorry, there's no physical product. It's only a download. Yes, there's a video. Yes, there's written instructions. And yes, there's a traceable template. That's what you get with your virtual art kit. Okay, the second place would be Patreon. Patreon.com slash creatively uncorked. They will eventually go to Patreon, okay? Immediately they go to art kits, the virtual art kits. Eventually they go to Patreon. They're scheduled there through the end of the year. So, all right, moving on. Let's get down to action, huh? Okay, so once again, I'll cover our, our designs very quickly. We have the flip cup. This is the first, demo, first one I'll show you. We have also, let me see, I'll set that aside. We have the mermaid tail. This is the second one. We have the uh, swipe, which will be the third one. And then possibly, possibly I'll show you a fourth design. I haven't decided yet. We'll see. All right, onward to your kits. What you have in your kit. And I'll just turn on my side angle camera so you can see what happens when I start mixing and pouring paint. It'll give you a little bit better view there. All right, so we all have, we should have a tray. We should have our, um, our, our canvas. We should have our cup that we're going to do our mixing in. And then we should have all of our paints for mixing. So we've taken all of the guesswork out of this for you. This should be just completely easy. Uh, we've got our paints all mixed up. The white is a little bit different formula. I call this the action color. You're going to see why once we get started. But then we've got our four other colors that if you chose colors, you got probably similar to the colors that you chose. If you didn't choose colors, then you got whatever Drake wanted you to have. <laughs> Drake's the one that packs up the art kits during the day. And, uh, and he's, he's doing a pretty good job of it. He's, so if you have a sketch canvas, he's probably the one that sketched your canvas. All right, so on to the dirty pour. So you'll notice I'm not wearing gloves. You can wear gloves if you want to. It'll protect your fingernails from, you know, getting paint under them, but it's non-toxic paint, so it's not really necessary. All right, I'll show you a couple of other, couple of other designs. Here's another one. This is also a dirty pour or flip cup. Here's one that's got some really nice selling happening in here like this, okay. And I have an example of what not to do, but I'll save that for later. All right, so we're gonna get some fun stuff going on. So just go ahead and take your paints. They should be marked with an F. If they're not marked with an F, well, you're gonna be done with these after tonight anyway, so don't worry. All right, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of this paint, pour it on the bottom. Go to my next color. I think I'll do a nice, nice uh, light blue here, and I'll pour a little bit of that on. So uh, if you're seeing this, you're already starting to see probably a little bit of magic happen. Not very much, not yet. I'm gonna cause a little bit more magic to happen with this one, watch. I'm gonna pour from way up high. Okay, when you pour from up high, that's gonna cause a little bit more stirring, a little bit more bubbling. So you should start to see the colors turn in here. Okay. See, happening already. Have any of you guys done this before? Done any flow arts or done any pours? Leave it in the comments. 
Just remember that I, <laughs> I can't see your name. <laughs> but if you say something bad, I'll find you. <laughs> and then white. Now white is our action color. Now watch, I, I can't guarantee you're gonna see some action right now in the cup, but you will see it once it gets to the canvas. Okay, you're already starting to see some bubbling in there, a little bit of selling. Set my wood aside and then I'll keep on going see. Starting to bubble, magic's starting to happen. A couple of things that add to our natural talent <laughs> that we have when we're making these pours is gravity and time. We have a couple of assistants of our own today. Okay, pouring from way up here. Told you I was gonna make a mess. All right, any paint that's spilling on the canvas right now, I don't care, it's all going to get covered. Another one from way up here. Oh, you see that? Magic starting to happen. This is gonna be a good one. I'll just kind of layer this color and you can layer colors in if you pour them low and you can mix colors in if you pour them high. So that was a layer and then now I'll kind of give it a good mix. Ooh, pouring way up high. Okay, and then I have a little bit of white left. I'll go ahead and pour this from way up high. That way I get my white mixed in a little bit. All right. Now I feel like an artist. <laughs> so here is why we call it a flip cup. So I'm gonna take my paint, take my canvas, put it upside down over my cup, flip the whole thing over. All right. So when you ordered your kits, your kit covers one technique. It covers one canvas. Uh, we give you the right amount of paint to cover that canvas. So uh, you can't use the leftover for anything else, sorry. Um, so I'm going to show you a few different techniques. You can just choose the one that you like the best and, uh, and that's one you can do. So now I'm just waiting, like I said, time is our friend, gravity is our friend. So I'm just giving this a little bit of time and letting gravity work its magic. Okay, and it's, it is a, a transparent cup here, so you can kind of see a little bit happening if you look at the side angle view a little bit. Enough time, right? All right. Okay, so now I'm just gonna kind of drag the cup a little bit, tilt it just a little bit. Ooh, look at that, wow. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at that. All those little bubbles that are in there, those little circles, those are called cells. And what you're seeing is called selling. Selling happens in large part due to the white paint. That's why I say white is your action color. So I'm just gonna tilt this. Okay, where I'm dripping, I'm just gonna take that paint, just add a little to the edge. A couple of things are happening as I'm tilting now. The cells are stretching, so the uh, design is getting a little bit more interesting. Just covering the edges there. I forgot the other thing, sorry. <laughs> I'm sure it was important. <laughs> I'll tell you if I remember. All right, so here and you might not be able to tell this, but so when I poured the white from way up high and it kind of scattered all through, and then I poured a couple of those colors from way down low, so then I'm getting good solid streaks of those colors, like that, that uh, the turquoisey color, I poured it from way down low, and that gives me this solid area. Same with one of the purples early on. So that's what's happening there. Oh, I like these colors. Hey, Drake, good job picking out colors for me. So you wanna kinda make sure you're covered, your edges are covered and just tapping the edges just to make sure. And then just tilting it around. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I don't mind that at all. So I'm just taking my extra stuff here and I'll get this out of the way before I make a real mess. Paper towels, good thing to have handy. Okay, any questions? If you have any questions, go ahead and throw them out there. I'll answer as many questions as I can before we move on to the next one. And uh, just remember, we're on a pretty significant delay. There might be a whole minute between what I'm saying and when you're hearing it. 
So I'll just give you a little bit here. Just make sh sure I'm covering your questions if you have any. And when you're ordering your art kits, your flow art kits, whatever room you're going to put this in, if you, you know, if you're remodeling a bathroom, which I think is the most common thing I hear, uh, or a kitchen or any other room that you might want to put this in, a baby's room maybe, just let us know what colors you want. And we'll get those colors picked out for you um, and make sure you match. You're always going to get a white. So you get a white plus four colors with your kit, which is exactly enough to cover your canvas. And you're also going to get a tray. One strong recommendation if you haven't started yet, oh, I'm sorry for not saying this earlier, cover your table. If you can cover your table with anything, newspapers, anything, piece of plastic, whatever, protect your table, that's going to help out a lot. See, look at that. I got one on this nice coaster. So I have this coaster out here just to show you. We're doing these as art kits. Uh, we've done them as studio events, you know, several times over the last few years. But this is a coaster uh, which we're we can do pours on and we'll do these as an art kit. So look for those in the art kits section coming up really soon. And um, so this is where I wanted to show you a what not to do. So you see what's happening here? No selling. The colors are kind of the colors are kind of transparent, so they just kind of uh, blend into each other. So maybe not as interesting as it could be, and that's why because they didn't use any white on that one. There was no white, and on this one where we have our white added, that's where we see all this action. We get all this interesting things happen, and these colors are transparent. You can't tell that right now because they look very white. They look very opaque, and they're not. <laughs> Once this dries, it'll dry transparent. So this was very bright and very vibrant, vibrant while the paint was still wet. And then when the paint dried, then it kind of went flat and went dark. That's another reason that we want to make sure we always add white when we're creating our paintings. All right. Any questions? Well, ask questions if you have them. Whatever questions you want to ask, I will answer if I can. And I'll just set this one aside. Now. Just so you know, your flow art paintings are going to take two to three days to dry. They are not going to dry overnight. They are not going to dry quickly. It is going to take some time. So make sure you set those aside somewhere that they're not going to get disturbed for a couple of days. And just let them be. Um, if you go back tomorrow and you're like, ooh, I wonder if it's dry. No, it's not dry and you're going to leave a fingerprint. Just let it be. Just wait till like, Three days, just to be safe, wait three days before you go sticking your finger in the paint, okay? All right, what do we have here? Got some greens, got some purples. Hmm. Hmm, that's kind of a nice vibe. Ooh, okay, so these are my glow-in-the-dark colors. I think I'll wait with those. <laughs> yes, we have glow-in-the-dark paints. If you want your flow art to glow in the dark, just request glow in the dark paints when you when you get your kit. This one. All right. So here here's where we're going to vote, guys. So this is where you have to respond. Do we want to do greens and purples or do we want to do pinks and reds and oranges? So greens, oranges. Green or orange. I'll wait for your comment. I'm going to do one of these two techniques and or one of these two color choices and I'm going to do this as the mermaid tail pour. This is a mermaid tail pour we did recently. I'll shut off that side camera for you so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Okay so here is one big mermaid pour. So this one's got some metallic golds, got some blue and white, Pretty nice. This one turned out really nice. And then here, <laughs> this is one of my more favorites. We have a bunch of these around here, but I can't find them. I don't know what happened to them. We, we've done a bunch of these mermaid tails because I really like the look of the design. So we're, well, they'll end up being like really sunset-y. You can go with full sunset colors. Um, but you, you can, the way I usually do this is I'll start with a, the light color, go to the dark color or dark to light, whichever, it doesn't really matter. And then you get all this beautiful selling happening in between all the way through. And you just get this beautiful pattern of just nice colors. I just really like this look. So pinks, green for mermaid, green, green, orange. Oh, come on, you guys, it's a tie. 
<laughs> oh no, we're going to need a tiebreaker. <laughs> okay, one more vote for a tiebreaker. Come on, guys, I need one more vote for a tiebreaker. Don't make me vote myself. <laughs> it's totally a tie right now between greens and pinks and oranges. Green and purple or pink and orange. <sighs> I don't know. I feel like I'm going to have to make this decision myself. <laughs> well. All right. It's fine. It's cool. It's fine. I'll just do that then. Ooh, pink. Good choice. Hey, excellent choice. Whoever said pinks, great minds, because that is the one I was picking out. All right. So now we have our mermaid tail. I'll just take my paints and set those aside. Get my canvas all set up here. Make sure you can see that. Get my side angle view back up so you can see that too. Okay, so when I'm adding my paints this time, I'm basically working with my four main colors. And what I'm doing is I'm choosing light to dark. So I'm gonna go dark. I'm gonna call this dark one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is my light color. One, two, three, four. It's bright, I don't know if it's light. Maybe it should go there. Yep, one, two, three, four. So those are my colors. Here's my mixing cup. Here's my white. So we have all of the important things in life right here. <laughs> so I'll start with color number, whichever, lightest color. And you know how last time we were pouring from way up high, we were getting all this fun action, the fun mixing, the really different, uh, uh, the, the, the fun little bubbles happening. So this time I want to be a little bit more careful. So I'm just going to layer it in and I'm pouring all of it in a layer. So if you can see this from the side, I'll move my hand. So I'm just pouring low and slow, just filling it all in right from the bottom. Okay, once that's used up, I move on, add a little bit of white. <laughs> hey boss, well, I can't see the name, but um, hey, <laughs> I can guess. Is it Maddie? <laughs> um, what type of paint is this? Somebody's asking. This is acrylic paint that we've mixed with a, a medium, and then we've added a few additives to to get it to flow. But it is acrylic paint. You're probably asking that because of the dry time, I bet. Like oil paint, it takes forever to dry. Um, oil paint can take even weeks to dry, months in some cases, but nope, this is acrylic paint. It's just we're putting it on so thick that it takes forever to dry. So this, I'm just layering it, making sure to layer, 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 pouring it low and slow again. Use all of your paint. We're not saving any of this for later. Okay, now I've got a little bit of white in there. I'm adding white between each layer of color because white is my action color. So I have to have that white in there to make sure I get the bubbles and the selling and the fun action. Okay, layering on this second darkest color. Guess what's next? <laughs> yup, you guessed it, more white. There we go. And now we have our darkest, darkest color. And again, just slowly layering that right on top. And there we are. So I'll just throw those extra paint cups away, get them out of my way. All right. Uh-oh, I forgot to save a little bit of white. Well, that's okay. So what I wanted to save a little bit of white for, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i start at one corner and I'll work my way to the opposite corner and then paint will flow where paint already is. So I wanted to put some paint in these two corners just to make sure paint flows in those corners. I kind of wanted it to be white, but you know what? It doesn't matter. It can be any color. So I had my darkest red. So I'm just adding that, adding it to the corners. 
And that's just to make sure that my paint will flow over the edges and cover those corners because these are the least likely corners to end up with paint on them. So just to, just to make sure. <laughs> I did say we were going to make a mess. Whew. Fun mess, though. Hey, Maddie, thanks for leaving me this giant stack of paper towels. <laughs> I totally need it. Now, on to the mermaid pail, mermaid tail pour. So now I have my colors. Show them to the side angle camera there. So I've got them layered pretty nicely, white in between. So now I'm going to start in my top left, work my way down to the bottom right. And oh, make sure canvas is balanced there. So I'm starting in the corner, pouring very slowly. A little tiny bit of paint, and I'm just working my way in a circular motion here. A little bit of a rotation. And you can see it getting lighter and lighter because I've had my lighter colors at the bottom of the cup. Just keep right on going. All the way down to the bottom of that corner. There. Whatever leftover paint here, I'll just add it to my opposite corners. Okay, you see what's happening there now? Because we had that white in between every color, now we're getting this action. I'm gonna tilt it up just a little bit. Just covering that corner, just to make sure the paint covers the corners, because it bugs me when the paint doesn't cover the corners. And that's it, that's the only reason. So then I'll just rotate it around. Just go right up to the edge. The paint's going to fall over. Over the edge, I mean. <laughs> Rotating it back a little bit this way. There, getting up to those, uh, those two opposite blank corners, the ones that I was trying to add a little bit of extra paint to. Because you can see what would happen, right? That would be like a blank white corner right now with all that extra paint. Okay, now you can see there is a lot of paint on this canvas. So it is definitely okay to let the extra paint run right off. The more paint you have on the canvas, the longer this takes to dry. And you've already got your design. You're just kind of stretching it over all the edges right now. Okay, better set that down. And kind of watch as you're pouring. If you, if you have any kind of a specific pattern in mind, um, like if you wanted it to be exactly diagonal, or in this case, it's kind of turning out a little bit more horizontal, but with some fun colors and fun edges. Just kind of watch out while you're pouring. So yeah, I think I might do a little bit of tilt right on that kind of corner over there. I'll just let all my extra paint run off that one corner. And you see how your design kind of changes a little bit with every tilt. That is, I gotta say, <laughs> I do believe that one is one of my favorite techniques for pouring. It just, it always turns out nice looking. It just always does. You always get the selling. You always get the, the nice, beautiful, colorful stripes. Really, the main difference is how you tilt and what colors you use. And that's one that I kind of, I really like to use the sunset colors. So I'll use sunset colors a lot for these. Okay, any questions? Go ahead and ask questions. I'll try to answer all of your questions on these before I move on to the next one. And I know probably nobody is actually painting along with me like we normally encourage, um, but you have one kit per person, generally. I mean, I know several people ordered multiples, but with one kit, you basically have one technique that you're going to do. So maybe you want to watch all the techniques before diving in and trying your own. I mean, if you're going to try your own right now, by all means, you just go right on ahead and do that. All right, I get my mess cleaned up here. Okay. I'll give you just another minute or so to ask questions because I know it takes a little while for them, for you to hear them and for them to pop up on my screen. 
right? And that is our lovely mermaid tail. I'm going to find the swipe here. Okay, I don't have that many examples of the swipe. No real reason. <laughs> it's just not my favorite technique. So I just don't have as many examples. As you can see, it is still a fun technique. I'll get rid of my side angle camera there so you can see these. These are the couple of examples that I still have in the studio. We've done so many of these over the years. And then, oh, here's one. <laughs> yeah, and then I just can't find them. They're just not here anymore. But they're always in the first sale bin, so they just disappear. Um, so that's another swipe. Another example of a swipe with giant cells. This one's got like a lot of little cells. This one has metallic paint. Metallic paint is usually really good. Um, contrast against the other paints. And then this one's just got some giant red dots. Uh, yeah, so these are all swipes. So this is what I'm going to attempt to do next. No questions? Okay. You asked for it, or you didn't ask for it. <laughs> you didn't ask anything. <laughs> okay, so I'll just move right on. I'll get my mess out of the way and start out with a whole new mess. And, you know, I think these colors might just be perfect for this. Yep, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So I have to have another paper towel handy. Oh, boy. And then after this, you guys can just let me know if you want to, if you want me to do a fourth technique, which would be a brand new different and unique technique that I've never tried before, but I will do it with you today if you want me to. But you have to let me know. So I'll take all my colors, set them aside. Okay, I'll get my side camera back up there. So this time I'm going to take my white and just set it aside. And then I'll take my other colors and just have them out handy. Um, so one thing that I'll do a little bit differently with this technique, and now this is the swipe technique, the one thing I'll do a little bit differently with this is I am going to start with a small amount of paint on the canvas to begin with. So if you're a big fan of finger painting, <laughs> actually all these, all of these involve finger painting, it's fun, it's good. kind of covering the edges, but not really. Okay, so I've got the background covered. There's my white paint. And I'm saving most of my white. If you can see this, I've still got most of the cup of white. I just used only enough to cover the back, the canvas. All right, more paper towels. I'm making a big mess here. Okay, so now here's the fun part. I think I'm going to swipe. Uh, I better decide now. I'm going to swipe. Hmm. I'm going to swipe this way. Yeah? Yeah. All right, that's what I'm going to do. Got it. Settled. No more arguing. <laughs> so this time, like I said, a little bit different. I'll just do some, a little bit of pores. Just pouring a little bit of paint here and there. That's enough of that. Let's move on. So white being my action color and being on the bottom, I should be able to get a decent amount of action without uh, mixing too much white into these puddles. Should. I'm not making promises here. Just telling you what I expect. Okay, I'll save a little bit of yellow there. Move on to my, oh, it's a nice green. Okay, you kind of see where the yellow is touching the purple there. We're kind of getting some, some selling happening already, just a little. Let's 
See, this would be a good technique for your favorite sports team, maybe. I think we have too many colors for any sports team right now, but <laughs> maybe. I'm just adding a little bit to the center of each. And you can do this as many times as you want. You can add as many circles as you want. I'm going to put one way over there, put another one over here. You don't have to have every color in every circle. This is totally up to you. This is your flow. There, I think I used up all of my light green there. So then I'll go back to, let's go back to some purple. I'm kind of tempted to add some white in here just because I know white is going to force some action, force some selling. And yes, we did mix the white differently than we mixed the other colors. I'm going to try just a little bit of white in some of the circles. Not too much. Okay, that's enough. Yep, so the white has a different mix. The other colors are all mixed basically the same, but the white is your action color. And we're going to go with some more green. Boy, that purple is pretty strong, but this green, I think, might take it over. We'll get to see, won't we? And we'll get some white all along up the top. A little bit over there, just kind of filling in a couple of little areas. Because so I'm swiping this way to that. So I just want to make sure I have enough paint to cover. So I'll just dab that white right up to the top. All right. Then on to the swipe part. So the swipe, this is an ordinary paper towel dunking it in a glass of water. And now I have a wet paper towel. It's magic. So what I'm doing is just dragging the edge of this paper towel on the canvas. Starting with the white, dragging it all the way through. See, and if I do zigzags, I'm going to get different designs. Ooh, well now, look at that. Okay, so now I've got some pretty darn good selling happening there, like a lot of good selling. Do you see that? Okay, that's kind of a happy design there. Get some more flow going over here. So I, I mean, the white band at the top is fine, but I'm gonna make it go away. I'm just gonna pour it right off the edge. See, and I'm still keeping all of my selling and I'm still keeping the majority of my stripes. So this would be something, you know, if you have a, I don't know, say green and yellow or whatever color your team is. Maybe, maybe you're the, the, the purple and gold kind of a team. I don't know. But this technique would be really, really good for that. You would have all of your team colors. You could even put your favorite number on it. You know, just a suggestion. Huh. Yeah, so now we got some interesting colors going on. So I'm just gonna stuff that paper towel <laughs> under the canvas. Oof, duh, what a mess I got. Uh oh, I only have a half of a paper towel left. Oh no, oh, okay. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to live with it. So any questions? Let me know if you have any questions. I'm seeing a lot of yes do the, f well, no, I see only one do the fourth technique. <laughs> well, one might be enough to convince me, I don't know, but maybe not. So if you guys want to see the fourth technique, let me know. Just be aware that it's a technique that I have never tried and it may not turn out, just so you know. So if you want to see me possibly fail completely, 
live on camera in front of the world, vote for the fourth one now. <laughs> what? No negativity. Did I forget to tell you guys the rules? So two rules. Rule number one, have fun. We've got that covered in spades. Rule number two, no negativity. So if you're voting for the fourth one just to see me fail, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> All right, I'm using my last paper towels here to clean up this table. And look at that, I still have a cup left over. Awesome. And now I'm gonna take my whatever green and purple team this might be, set it aside. And on to the fourth one. So let me see, I had a plan. I just have to think a minute to remember what it was. Oh, I remember, I got this, okay. <laughs> hey, unknown. <laughs> yes, actually, if you did vote twice, I wouldn't be able to tell. <laughs> Uh, let's see, so we aren't dealing with very strong colors here. These are all kind of pastel-y. So I think I'll go with, <laughs> I think I'll have to go with maybe this, then this, then this, then that, then this, then that. All right, I'm just deciding the order of my colors here. I don't know, it's kind of a similar technique to the mermaid tail where we'd go light to dark. But since these colors are all so light, I think I might just have to mix them up a little. I think we'll go with that, we'll, we'll go with this. Okay, so we have gray, bright yellow, blue, and dull yellow. All right, so be it. And so this one, again, I'm going to start by just pouring a little bit of white out on the canvas. I will have plenty of pour paint right in the center. So I'm just going to uh, get some white around the edges just to make sure that all of my paint reaches the edges. That's the rule, paint flows where paint already is. So if you want paint to go there, Put paint there. <laughs> what a rule, right? <laughs> All right, there we are. Keep my white handy because I will need that again. And we'll start with some pink. Or, yeah, pink. This is this is my favorite shade of pink. It's yellow. <laughs> so I'll just pour right down the side, slowly. Not too slowly, it's not gonna mix with anything. It's the only color in there. Okay, there's my yellow. I'm gonna do a little white in between. Just pouring it right down at the edge of the cup. Okay, I gotta put white between each color so I can't use it all up. I've got some blue. I think that this side angle isn't really helping all that much right now, but. Ooh, this is a metallic blue. Ooh, pretty. Very nice. And I think I'm going to put it all in. Maybe, yeah, maybe. No, I'm gonna save some. Ha, <laughs> back to the white. Just a little bit more. My next yellow, this super insanely bright yellow, fluorescent yellow, neon yellow, pour it slowly. We don't want this to mix. That is a bright, bright yellow. Man, this color was all the rage back in the 80s. <laughs> Danny, if you guys remember that. <laughs> 
white. Again, right down the side. So if there are any bartenders out there, a little bit like making a tequila sunrise, where you pour the grenadine down the side. Somebody was asking that today. Drake was asking that today. So we're talking about pouring paint slowly. And he's like, is that like when you pour it over a spoon? Not quite, <laughs> but close. <laughs> a little bit more white. This is the last of the white, so I'm using it all up now. And then I saved just a little tiny bit of that metallic blue because it's so pretty. I'm just pouring that right over. Okay, now, really, I have no idea what's gonna happen with this. I have not tried this yet. It just seemed like a fun idea at the time. Letting my color sit there for a minute, you know, for time and gravity. And then, all right, so I poured it in this side. I'm going to pour it out this side. little bit of a circle, just like the mermaid tail. Maybe not so much of a circle, maybe just a straight pour. Hmm, maybe a little circle. <laughs> the pattern changes, woo! Oh my gosh, did you see that? My cup cracked. Okay, don't squeeze your cup. <laughs> kind of scared me a little. So now I've got paint pouring out the side of the cup as well as out the end of the cup. So I'm gonna get some magical extra action happening over here. Okay, swirling in the yellow. Get that out of here before it makes a bigger mess. Hmm. I really like how that blue kind of got blended throughout. Even though it's a really faint color, it's a really um, soft color compared to the others, the metallic is showing through. So I like the way the metallic looks. It's kind of making the whole thing a little bit shimmery. And then we've got that fluorescent yellow in there that is just popping through all of the other color. All right, I'm just checking the comments. This and that and that. <laughs> are you making fun of me picking colors? <laughs> because some of the colors actually are called this and this and that. Probably. <laughs> well, now we got that fluorescent. Fluorescent, get it? <laughs> Sorry, that was terrible. Falling right out. Oh, in here, look, it happened. Okay, so this is one thing I wanted to show you. So if you get weird globs in your paint of anything that's not paint, get rid of it right away. Because your paint right now is really, really thick. And when it dries, it's going to dry flat. So your paint is really puffy right now and really thick. So if there are any um, extra globs of paint in there, if you know, you end up with a few extra stray dog hairs or I don't know, whatever might end up in there. Get rid of them now while your paint is still flowing because whatever's in there, it's going to be thick or, and it's going to have some uh, substance to it. Your paint will dry flat and whatever it is that's stuck in your paint is going to show way more than you want it to. Okay, yeah, so I think I'm gonna go with that. Um, that turned out a lot blander than I expected. <laughs> all of the colors sort of uh, blended right together. So now I know. Technique number four was a fail. So for anybody who was waiting to see me screw up on camera, you win a prize of getting to see me screw up on camera. But that's okay, see, I did this, so now you don't have to. 
All right, any more questions? So now is the time. What did you call the third and fourth techniques? The third technique I called the swipe. The fourth technique I called, well, I didn't call it anything. I just called it the fourth technique. Um, and now I call it fail. So the fourth technique is a fail, so you just don't have to do that one. Um, yeah, but the first technique was the flip cup. Second technique was a mermaid tail. Third technique was the um, swipe. And then the fourth was the fail. And I would pick them up and show them to you, but I'm kind of covered in paint right now. So I think I'm kind of stuck not showing, <laughs> uh, not showing them again. Any other questions? Now's the time to ask. So you could be watching this live right now in our Facebook group. Uh, Creatively Uncorked Live is the Facebook group. You could be watching this on our YouTube channel. Just do a search for YouTube, or do a search for Creatively Uncorked on YouTube, you'll find it. You'll either find this or you'll find my channel. Both of them have a lot of Creatively Uncorked stuff. So um, then, and like I said, going forward, all of the lives that we're doing, that we're demonstrating for you, all of these lives are going to stay on Facebook and they're going to stay uh, in, um, in our YouTube channel for a little while, probably a long while, I don't really know yet. But so what's happening instead is all of the videos we're doing live We'll leave them up posted for public. All of the videos that we're doing behind the scenes that we're recording during the day, which is generally two to three a day right now, all of those are being uh, used for our virtual art kits, for our art kits, and for our Patreon. So if you want access to all the other painting videos right away, you can check the virtual art kit section of creativelyuncorked.com and you're gonna find them there. So if you wanna do those paintings right away, uh, get a virtual art kit or an art kit, and then you're going to have access to that video. Otherwise, eventually, <laughs> they're going to be posted on Patreon. And Patreon has a good 40 or so videos now, and we just have new ones being added once or twice a week. So, And those are scheduled out for ever, for as far as we can go. So uh, Patreon, you'll get trickle content constantly, and uh, the art kits, you'll get it instantly. So it depends on how fast you want your videos. And then if you're just watching the lives, then you'll be able to find these for, for some time at least anyway. So, all right, any other questions? Doesn't look like I'm seeing any. All right, well, thank you for joining me. I'm Shanna Kramer. This has been Creatively Uncorked Live, and I'll see you next time.